Hello everyone. Greetings for the day. I am Vandana Bajaj and I am coming live for you from Mumbai. So happy to have you again with me on Unacademy Portal. I am a tutor with Unacademy since April 2020, but I have been in the teaching fraternity for last 11 years. I started teaching in uh, since June 2008 and have completed 11 fruitful years in this fraternity and this is my 12th year. Apart from that, uh, my forte is English language, literature, business communication and business management related subject and I am also a soft skills trainer. I am a net qualified assistant professor, a company secretary and I have done my masters in finance and bachelors in management studies. Along with this, I have been a paper setter and examiner with Mumbai University and have also written and presented a research paper on the topic Winning Corporate Wars from Learnings of Ramayan in the year 2019. I have also been awarded as the Best International Service Director in Roadtrack District 3140. That is all about me. I hope you are keeping safe in whichever part of the country you are. Coming down to our today's session, it is prepositions. Also, I want you to note down the referral code. So if you really enjoy this session and the live class after this session, I request you to subscribe to this wonderful portal, which helps us to connect in different parts of the country along with the students. All the sessions that we take are live, so we solve the doubts immediately. And you get the comfort of staying at home and studying with us. So you can use my referral code VB20, VB20, to subscribe to this portal of Unacademy and avail the lectures not just with Vandana Bajaj with a lot of other faculties on the portal. Coming down to our topic for today, that is prepositions. Now, prepositions, a lot of times I hear people saying that it is a very tricky topic. I also hear people telling me or complaining to me that they are confused most of the times. But this is a very important topic. Why? For two reasons. It brings structure to your sentence. And at the same time, it shows relationships. Relationship between persons, objects, locations. So actually, in short, if I tell you, this topic brings a lot of meaning to your sentence. So let us quickly understand what we are going to cover in our live session today. We are going to discuss the prepositions for direction, for the place, and for time. So three categories, okay, because it is a very wide and a very multi-dimensional topic. So today, for prepositions, I am going to talk about the time, direction, and place. Now, why attending this session is important? Because I have a news for you. Tomorrow, at the same time, we are going to have a live quiz on YouTube. So your performance for prepositions is not just going to be seen by me and your friends, but by everybody. So we are actually coming up with a live quiz for prepositions tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. And the topic, the questions will be based on today's session. So pay a lot of attention. Let's get started. We start with time as our first preposition. Now, do you see that reverse triangle? There is in, there is on, and there is at. So the triangle has been broken into three layers. Why? There is a reason behind that. When I tell you in, it is a general space and a bigger space. Now, when I tell you bigger, you can actually compare the area, not measure it. Compare the area with on and at. When I tell you general, it is bigger. That means I will use in when I talk about the parts of the day, months, seasons, years, decades, centuries and even longer periods. And that is where we use in. For example, when I tell you parts of the day, I drink coffee in the morning. In the morning, it can be at any time. It can be at 9 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, any time. But in that duration of the morning hours, he goes to gym in the afternoon. We have dinner in the evening. So these are the different times of the day, different parts of the day we use in. When I tell you about the months, seasons, years, decades, centuries, she was born in August. 
I like to go skiing in winter. Her aunt was born in 1978. And when I tell you her great grandmother was born in the 1920s, I am referring to the decades. And we are living in 21st century. Now, all these time frames that we are talking about, they are all big time frames. And that is the reason we say it is very general when we say in. And when we say long periods, let's say it's not healthy to live in past. You should always live in the present moment, in present. So when I tell you in the past, in the present moment, in August, and it can be any day in August. It can be any time, any day, any week in, in, in winter. It can be in any date, any month in 1978. And in 1920s, the entire period of 1920s, sometimes, you know, most of us, I think, must relate to this. Our great-grandparents don't know their birth date. They just know their birth year. So in the 1920s, very general. And we are living in 21st century, again, very general. So that is how we use in to understand the second part that is on. Okay, it's sliding very smoothly on your screens. When we talk about on, you can compare it with in and at. Okay, so it has a middle space that is less than in but more than at, which means it is smaller but not the smallest. It is more specific but not the most specific. So, when I use on with reference to time as a preposition, I will talk about days, I will talk about dates, I will talk about specific days, time, date plus part of a day. Which means, when I tell you day, date, specific days, time, day plus part of the day, we will read these sentences and associate every point that we have written on the left side of the screen. Let's meet on Sunday. Christmas is on 25th December. So now when I tell you on Sunday, I am talking about a day. But when I tell you that Christmas is on so-and-so date, I am talking about a date. Specific day. She remembers. She always remembers me on my birthday. They sent me a bouquet on my anniversary. So whenever we say on for a specific day, that's what I mean. We are having a breakfast on Sunday morning. So you see there is a day here that is Sunday and we have a part of the day morning. Which means I am being more specific than in. So I, if I say that, you know, we are having a breakfast in Sunday morning, wrong. We have breakfast in morning, correct. We have or we are having, okay, now I'm being more specific as compared to in. We are having our breakfast in morning. No. We are having our breakfast on, being more specific, Sunday morning. We are having a party on the coming weekend. So that is the time frame I'm talking. Please remember Please remember and don't get confused when I write time there. By that time, I'm not being very specific. I'm being more specific in comparison with in. So when I tell you time, I'm not talking about 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. What I am telling you is the weekend. Okay. Then we come down to the most specific. Now you see that it is pointed at the bottom, which means we are trying to be very exact about the time when we say at, it is taking the smallest space as compared to in, on and at. So very specific means we are going to talk about the hours, the parts of days, I will throw light there, time, holidays without a day in it, okay, so day will not be mentioned when I am talking about a holiday and day plus part of the day. Now you will see some of the things are repeating but when we take an example, we will understand it better. And if not, in the further slides, I have bifurcated it further to bring absolute clarity, even if there is an inch of confusion in your mind. So talking about hours, parts of the days, time, holidays without a day in it and day plus part of the day. My school starts at 7 o'clock. So now I am being very specific about that time, about that particular hour of the day when my school starts. I come home at lunchtime. Now, this is that time of the day, exactly at lunchtime. My dog doesn't sleep at night. Now, when I generally teach this thing, the next question that comes to me is, when you said parts of the day, you said in morning, in evening, in afternoon, but at night, please hold on to that confusion till we go to the next slide. I will solve that today. So, my dog doesn't sleep at night. I have a meeting at 9 p.m. 
I will be with my family at New Year's. So you see New Year without a day. Okay. So holiday. That is how I meant. Okay. So you don't write day when you use at. You're being very specific when you talk about that. Coming down to the confusion between at and on. We never go out at the New Year because the traffic is awful. One sentence with at. Another sentence with on. On New Year's Day, the whole family gets together. I told you that you use at when the holiday is without a day. Point number one. And point number two, when I tell you that we go, we never go out at the New Year because the traffic is awful, it means I am talking about, okay, at is used to talk about public holidays without the day. And when I tell you on the New Year's Day, the whole family gets together. We use on when we talk about a particular special day. So on the New Year's Day, particularly our whole family gets together. But we don't go out at the New Year because the traffic is awful. So New Year and New Year's Day. Second confusion is between in and on. Let's clear that. Most of the times we come across a sentence, I always work best in the morning. So it can be any time, right from the time morning starts till the time that part of the day merges with the afternoon. So I work the best in the morning. And the ship left the harbor on the morning of 9th of November. Now of 9th of November is very significant in this sentence. When I tell you in the morning, I am telling you we use in with morning, evening, afternoon and night we are still holding on to that confusion of night okay stay tuned and when i tell you the ship left the harbor on the morning of 9th of november i am telling you we use on we talk about a specific morning and how do you come to know we are talking about that specific morning or describing that particular point in the entire day because i have said that of 9th of november so when I say that, I'm being very specific about which morning I'm telling you. So in is more general, on is a little less general and a little less specific in comparison to in. We see that situation again in this sentence on your screen. And now the confusion between at and in specifically used with night. At the beginning of every lesson or the teacher told the children a little story. Okay, so at the beginning. Now you understand when I tell you that. Another example, in the beginning, nobody understood what was happening. But after she explained everything, we understood. What is the difference here? I am sure you must have spoken like this with a, a lot of times with your friends, be it in the school, be it in the college, or be it in an art class or any kind of class. That's sir, what he was explaining in the beginning, I did not understand. But when I tell you at the beginning, we are talking about a point, a point where something started, particularly at that point. And when I tell you in the beginning, I am telling you contrasting situations in the same sentence. Okay, so there is contrasting time frame. In the beginning, nobody understood what was happening. But after she explained everything, so badme. In the beginning is the start point and end point is after she explained. So here you will see two contrasting situations of time. She explained everything we understood. After this, in or at, now, now comes the time when you ask me why not to use in with the night. You can use it. We have a sentence on the screen. I was awake in the night thinking about the things that happened. And it's not safe to travel at night. What is the difference here, my dear students, and everybody who's watching this live session with me? So when I tell you I was awake in the night, I am telling you about that particular night. That one, I don't stay every day awake in the night. That one particular night. And when I tell you it is not safe to travel at night, it refers to night in general. At any night, it is not safe to travel. Are you understanding the difference here? When I tell you in the night or another important point here, 
when i tell you prepositions bring structure to your sentence they establish meaningful relationships what are we trying to say not just when you attempt the two marks four marks one mark question in your paper in your board but when you write the entire writing skill session section or solving the passage which is nearly 60% of your paper you are using preposition in every sentence 98% of the times you are using preposition in every sentence and you use it to establish a very meaningful relationship here so when i tell you in the night and when you write it in your story in the night that means you are addressing that one particular night and when i tell you at night or you write it is not safe to travel at night rita's mother told rita you are talking in general as an advice that the mother gave her daughter okay good to go nice another place now one of the uh, one of my student on the portal an academy had asked me this question in between the session for versus since and trust me my dear darling if you're watching this session or whenever you watch it i took this topic preposition because you raised a question in the class and it just brought the fact again to me okay i knew it but it is like you know you reminded me that ma'am when we talk about prepositions why are we so confused and that's why i decided to start working on the basics first and i came up with this session for since preposition place time and direction so now when we say for so this one specially for you and everybody who is confused when we talk about for and since whenever we talk about for we are talking about how long an action lasts and with a point of time in past from which some action began and it continues till the time of speaking i use since still confused now all those students who have attended my tenses session will be very clear about what is a perfect tense and the logic behind using a past perfect present perfect and future perfect tense darling every time you see a sentence with for or since i'm giving you a hack okay every time you see a sentence with for or since you will notice that 99.6% of the times we use a past perfect or a present perfect or a future perfect tense do notice this next time if you haven't till now okay giving you an example for for they have lived here for 5 years that means they are no more living here but they lived here for 5 years that means the action of living here lasted for 5 years and coming back to the first arrow that comes from for how long an action lasts it lasts for 5 years second she will not be here for another 3 hours how long will she not be here for another 3 hours they have been working for 2 hours how long have they been working for 2 hours so here every time you use for you will see that there is a perfect tense that has been used and you will see how long that action lasts and whenever i tell you a time from the past and the action is still continuing let's take an example to understand it better he has lived here since 1980 the moment i tell you since 1980 that means the action of staying here started in 1980 and is continuing till the present situation which means he is still living here but he started living since 1980 at the start of the session i told you i started teaching since or i am teaching since june 2008 that means i am still here i have taught for 11 fruitful years why because the duration is 11 and i am in my 12th year whenever you see the session again relate this with the starting of the session when i introduced myself he has lived here since 1980 everything has changed since the last summer that means the change is still existing in the present he had been writing novels since he was 30 years old that means even today he is writing it but 
the start point of that action of writing the novels started when he was 30. Good to go? Okay, if still when you attempt a question and you have a confusion, come back to this video, see the slide particularly, listen carefully to the explanation and I'm sure you're good to go. The next place where we use time preposition, by and during. Now what is the difference here? When I say by, I'm talking about the latest time at which an action will be finished. A lot of times you use this in your sentence, especially when the teacher is asking you for the submission of the assignment. You use this, but you don't even realize it. You are subconsciously using that as a preposition to express something which you mean. And when I say during, it continues throughout the specified period, during that whole period. Explain it better with an example. He will finish his work by 5 o'clock. Now I say at 5 o'clock means specifically at 5 o'clock. I will submit the work at 5 today. That means at 5, I will have your work with me. By 5 o'clock, that means it can be at 4.30, 4 o'clock, 3.30, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, any time. By 5, that means 5 is the last time, the latest time that you're going to take to finish your work. By that time, the moon moves up. So that means by the time, now by the time I reached there, by the time the train came, by the time I sat for the dinner, it can be any situation. But the latest time that the moon took to come up was by that time in general. Applications must be received by 10th of May. Now this you must have read during admissions or during submissions that latest you can give your entry by so and so date. That means not at that particular day or date, you can give it any time, 9th May, 8th May, 7th May. But latest by 10th May, which means after 10th May, the applications will not be taken. Okay. And when I say during, it is continuing throughout the specified period, which means during the war, many people were killed. So the entire period when the war lasted, a lot of people were killed. We tried to contact people during October. So that is one month, okay, the whole month of October, we are contacting people, we are recruiting people. We work during the day, the whole day you work, everybody agrees to this, and sleep during the night. I assume 60% of the youth will agree to this, 40% won't. So we work during the day and we sleep during the night. So we are talking about two time frames, okay, and throughout that period, what action is continuing? Working is continuing during the day. Sleeping is continuing during the night. Good to go? Great. Then, easiest. Now, most of the times we don't make a mistake here, but it is always important to understand the use. From, till or until. Now, till or until can be interchangeably used. But, but remember, not to lose marks. You have to be careful when you are using till in place of until or vice versa. When you pay attention to the pronoun in the sentence. I will give you an example. When we talk about from, it is the start point of an action. And when we talk about till or until, it means it is done up to a particular point or in time. And then stopping. That means the action is stopping after that particular point in time that we are referring to. From. Let's take an example. She lived with them from the age of 20. So the action started when she was 20. He sits in the office from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. He sits in the office. Starts at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also, you will see that a lot of places from will always be in company with to or, you know, they go hand in hand from and to, from and till also. Like in the next example. We worked from morning till evening. That means the action stopped after evening. Okay. Now, if I give you example for till or until. He is expecting to be here till the end of the week or until the end of the week. That is the latest he's going to be here is by this weekend. I was employed by the company till 1980, until 1980, both are correct. But the third one is where I tell you about the pronoun. You will have to wait until my return. You will have to wait till I return. So my and I. That is what I was telling you. Before and after, 
Very easy to understand. Let's just discuss it again. Earlier than something we used before. Remember. Remember we are doing this keeping time in mind. Okay. And after is when you do something later. Later than compared to something. So I'll say I'll do this after this or I'll do it before this. For example, I get up before 6. She returned before Monday. But after, they came here after 8 o'clock. We went to Paris 4 years after our marriage. That means something happened and after that something happened. So I'll say after. Now we come down to the prepositions for place. Again, the most confused will be addressed the first in our session. In, you see the area that it's occupying. On, you see the area it is occupying. And at, again with that tapering pointed bottom, you see how much area it is occupying. So when I say in, it is general, it is bigger. So when we talk about place, we use it with countries. We use it with cities, our neighborhood, or an enclosed space. Most of the times, our very intelligent students, now I'm not being sarcastic, you guys are actually intelligent. You belong to the smart generation. But the confusion comes when we talk about an enclosed space. When I say in and I say we talk about the country, cities and neighborhood, what I'm telling you is, let's say, Maria was born in France. France is a country. I have a meeting in New York. New York is a city. A neighborhood. I will be living in New Delhi. So it's a neighboring country or neighboring state or a neighboring city. So it is my neighborhood. But when I tell you about an enclosed space, please remember you can never say that you are or he is in the ground. Ground is a flat space. You can be on the ground. You can be at the ground. But you cannot be in the ground. Okay. But you can be in the kitchen. I am currently staying in a hotel. I have kept the tickets in my wallet. Or I can tell you that because I have a broadband failure with my Wi-Fi provider, I am in my neighbor's house. So it is an enclosed space. You keep the tickets in your wallet or money in your wallet. So that is how we use in. So whenever we talk about an enclosed space, another easy way to solve prepositions for place is to remind yourself or imagine the position of that object, whether it is above whether it is in, whether it is in an enclosed space or whether it is a country or a city. When we talk about on, it is more specific, comparatively smaller when I compare it with in and more specific when I compare it with in, which means when I talk about place, I'm going to use it with the streets or the avenues, surface, means of transport or communication. For example, Streets and avenues. We are on the 5th Avenue on the Smith Street. My apartment is on the 18th floor. Okay, this is the surface. On. We are standing on the Smith Street. My apartment is on the 18th floor. The book is on the desk. Okay, it is on the surface of the desk. When I tell you means of transport and communication, Krish was on the bus while his sister was live on the radio. So radio is a mode of communication. That is how we use it. The shop is on the left. Even when you are communicating, you know, where is the shop? The shop is on your left. In your left, wrong. At your left, wrong. You can say at the end of the corner or at the end of the street. But you cannot say on the end. You can say on your left, on your right. So remember next time, whenever you communicate verbally, and you're giving a direction, try to use on. And that's how you keep reminding your mind about when to use on and when to use in. And now coming to something that is the most specific when we talk about the place and that is at. Very specific and smallest, which means I will use it with address or I will use it with specific locations. What does that mean? To take an example on your screen, send me a letter at 124 Main Street, my address. I, I will meet at the clubhouse. I'm being very specific about my location. Where exactly? 
at the clubhouse. We spent a quiet evening at home. I met her where exactly specifically if I ask you where did you meet your best friend? I met her at school. I met her at concert. You have to be very careful when you write such things in your story. In the letter, prepositions play a very important role, not just in one or two liners, but everything that you write in your life. He works at the university. We met at the entrance of her workplace. So we are being very specific. We met at her workplace, agreed. But now if I want to be more specific, I will say we met at the entrance of her workplace. Apart from this, another confused preposition. A lot of times I have seen students losing marks here. Let's just finish it, finish the confusion for once and for all. So when I tell you beside, at the end, okay, at the side of or next to, Whenever I tell you, you know, this is beside this thing, that means it is next placed next to this, this thing. And whenever I tell you besides this, it means in addition to this or except this. For example, at the side of or next to, would you come and sit beside me? That is like, would you come and sit next to me? Now, when you tell me near me, a lot of times students confuse this thing, okay? Beside me is like immediately next to me. So if I am here, you come and sit or stand beside me. Near me is I am here and you can be anywhere in this area. Near me. So when I want to be more specific, I will say beside me. There was a small table beside the bed. So if I ask you, oh, where is that, where is that uh, book kept? You said it's kept beside the table lamp. Okay. And when I say in addition to besides, so I said there was no one besides me. So only I was there. Except me, no one was there. So except. And she wants to learn another language besides English and French, which means she's already learned or has started learning English and French. And in addition to that, plus it, she wants to learn another language. So that's how we use beside and besides. Again, I would tell you whenever you solve a question and you are confused, come back to this video, come back to this slide, listen to the explanation. Keep reminding your mind when to use beside and besides, for or since, and you are very good to go. I promise you that if you play this video twice or thrice with your 100% attention on the listening and understanding, you will never make a mistake in prepositions. That's my confidence. Coming to the next slide, when I tell you between and among, one hack after two people, it refers to two people, two things to connect numbers, okay, but two. And whenever I use among, it is for a group. That means it is more than two. So if there are three people, you will say among. And if there are two people, you're going to say between. For example, there was a cyclist between the car and the lorry. So when you explain me the exact place or position of that cyclist, you're giving me an imagination that, okay, there was a car and there was a lorry and the cyclist was in between. And when the accident happened, you tell me the lorry hit. I understand that the lorry must have hit the cycle, cyclist first and then the car because the cyclist was in between the car and the lorry. The cat went and sat between Juzi and Nehal. So now I know the exact place or position where the cat went and sat. What were you doing between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m.? So I'm talking about a time frame where I've given you the start to end. But if I want to know during that entire period, I can also ask you what were you doing from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. But again, understand between is and even sounds more appropriate. They lived in New York between 1998 and 2004. So if you see, whenever I'm talking about numbers, I'm using between. You can never say among, though the number of yours are more than two. Correct? Good. When I say among, there wasn't much unity among the council members. Among. There was a lot of, there were a lot of council members. She felt the most comfortable when she was among her friends. Not one friend, two friends, but more than two. A group. Paula always wanted to swim among dolphins. Among dolphins. With dolphins, one dolphin. With dolphins, correct. But among dolphins, like, you know, dolphins are everywhere around her and she's swimming with them. So when you refer or you view the things as a group and not distinct, one and two, use among. 
direction. Coming to the third part of our PPT, we spoke about the time, we spoke about the place, and I hope we have cleared a lot of our doubts in our mind, a lot of questions, when to use this. We keep forgetting sometimes, even when the teacher has taught it to us. Only reason is not because we don't have a good memory, it's just that we forget to polish our brain. You buy, it's like, you know, I'll just give you a small example here. You buy the best brand shoes, but if you don't wipe them, or you don't polish them, they will wither out. That's how it goes with knowledge. You have to keep polishing it. You have to keep reminding yourself, your brain about it. And there we see this auntie on the screen who's so lost. You are lost. So I am helping you find your direction correctly. So let's talk about the directions here. Under and below. They both mean the same. In fact, a lot of times when you Google, they will tell you that you can use under and below interchangeably. And still when you do that in your question paper, okay, you do that in your answer sheet, in your exams, you lose marks. Vandana strikes here. Something being covered by something else, we say under. And when I want to say below, when the object is not directly under another, okay, so there is a little space. The surface and below the surface. The surface and under the surface. Below, under. Below, under. Remember it like that. Okay, so surface B will be the farthest, U will be the nearest. So under, below. Under, below. I'm just giving you a <laughs> funny action. To remember the concept forever. Explain it to you with an example. The cat was sleeping under the blanket. I felt he was hiding something under his jacket. In, in touch. Okay. Covered. The whole village was underwater. That means it was still in touch with water. But when I say below. We could find something Below the surface of water. That doesn't mean the water surface is this and you're finding here. No, you'll find below. So if this is the water, you're finding it below. Billions of people still live below poverty line. That means I use it as a vertical measurement. You'll understand it better with this example. When I say under, I can use it for younger than or less than. And I will use below when I talk about measurements on vertical scale. So whenever you read this thing, you know, you have to be under 18 to be a minor. Please remember, if you read below this age, it is correct. But below 18 years is wrong English. Under 18 is correct. Below is used when I'm measuring it on a vertical scale. Okay, so this part of the country is below the sea level. So I'm measuring it. Most of the people are below the poverty line. So under the poverty line is wrong. They are on the poverty line. They are below the poverty line. And below can go to any depth. They can be like the poorest or the poorer or the poor people. Okay. So remember this again. Whenever you want to attempt a question, come back to the slide and so get your query solved. Over and above. Again, people say it can be used interchangeably. I would like to defer here. Not every time you can exchange these words. So over, when one thing touches or covers another, we say over. And above is, it refers to the things that are at an upper or a higher level. So over and above. Okay, over, above. On, in touch with the surface. Over can be in touch or above the surface. And above is farther as compared to over. So if you have an option between over and above, use your imagination. Imagine the position, direction and then use it. For example, they put a blanket over her to make her feel comfortable. That means she was here and they put a blanket over her, not above her. They didn't hang the blanket. They put the blanket over her. And when I refer to things that are at an upper or a higher level, do you live in that wooden house above the village? So the village is there and above the whole village that you see there is a wooden house. And I'm asking you, do you live above that? Over and above. Another place where we use over and above is with numbers. 
So whenever I want to say with numbers, I will say over. And whenever I want to say with temperature, we will say above. Be very careful about this fact when you are talking. Okay, when you are orally communicating. Please remember, we use over with numbers. For example, I get over 60 emails per day. If you weigh over 100, okay, above, wrong. If you weigh over 100 kgs, you need a diet plan. And when I say with temperatures, the temperature is already above 30 degrees. And it is actually, it's getting hot. So, with temperature, I will always use above. Whenever you say over, it is a wrong usage. Another place where a lot of times I've seen students getting puzzled, perplexed, confused and baffled. So when I say across, okay, this time I'm using a little bit of drawing to explain this to you. Whenever I say across, it is from one side to another. So this is the surface across. That means you are on the surface, okay, you are on the surface. And whenever I say through, from one end or from one point to or towards the other. So, if you see that drawing, the person across is on that bridge or on that path. It's a 2D picture, a two-dimensional thing. But the moment I tell you through, there is a tunnel and the man is going through that tunnel. Okay, so, there's a tunnel and the man is going through that tunnel. So, from one end to other, a 3D picture because there are three dimensions here. You are surrounded by it. Explain it with another example. You are on the surface and here you are surrounded. And that is the reason I'll repeat why I said across is like a 2D picture and surrounded is like a 3D picture. And that is the reason when they tell you Dolby surrounded sound, that means you will feel as if the music is playing everywhere around you. You must have heard this surround system, uh, Dolby surround system. So, the music is playing, you feel, okay, even though it is playing here, from your ear plugs into your ear, but you still feel as if everywhere the beat, you can feel the beat sometimes here, sometimes here. So it gives you that effect, surround sound. You're surrounded by the sound. Remember that example to help you with through. To give you some other examples, from one side to the other, we walked across the desert, okay? So you don't walk through the desert. You're not a mouse or a rodent. You walk across the desert, okay? The medical shop or the pharmacy shop closes or is across the lane, okay? So now if I tell you it is across the lane, that means the lane is here, you are standing here and the shop is here. It is across, a 2D picture. I saw a sparrow while walking across the ground. So you cannot walk through the ground, okay? You will walk across the ground. So this is the ground. You are walking from one end of the ground to the other end. And when you were walking, you saw a squirrel or a sparrow. From one end or one point to or towards the other. I can see the water flowing through the pipe, okay? Always remember this to remember through. You can see the water flowing through the pipe, which means it is surrounded by the pipe and the water is flowing from here. It is surrounded. They came through the back door. They came through the back door. Door is surrounding. So if this, let's say this is the door, they came through the back door. The road led us through the bushes. That means everywhere we were surrounded by the bushes and the road led us through the bushes. Another example to give you it through is I am running my fingers through my hair, which means when I am running these fingers, they are surrounded by the hair. So I used to, I'll not say I am running my fingers across my hair. You run them through your hair. That means they go inside your hair and this light. Okay, remember this is if it helps you. Also, let's say you can use across when I say uh, Jerry was staring across the room. So if I'm sitting here and I'm staring at that position across the room, okay, not through the room. But you see the stars through the telescope because when you're seeing the stars through the telescope, your vision is surrounded by the telescope material. Point to be pondered upon. Another place where I see the confusion is between to, into and towards. 
and the most confusing is two and two words. Ma'am, why was my sentence wrong if I had used two instead of two words? Why did she give me wrong? Okay, let me tell you why did she give you wrong. You see that box? You see two gradually moving in the direction of the box and then you see two words that is also moving in the direction of the box. But the box is open and if I want to keep something inside that box, I will say into. So into is clear. But two and two words. Let's understand in two words. Don't worry. I'll give you an example for that also. But to understand two and two words, let's say Joy walk or walks to work every day. So he goes into the direction of his work every day. They will drive to San Francisco. Yesterday, Billy rode his bicycle to the park. So I know in which direction Billy was riding his bicycle or in which direction he was driving. Correct? That means the movement is in particular direction. But when I tell you about two words, when I saw Joy, he was walking towards her. When I saw, when I saw is the important part. Whenever I talk about two words, it's from the point of view of the speaker. Tom stood with his back towards the door. Tom cannot say that. The speaker can say who is looking at Tom. Anna pointed towards the window. I am going to the ice cream parlor because I am going. My movement is in a particular direction. But if you see me walking towards, you will say, I saw ma'am going to the ice cream parlor, towards the ice cream parlor. Because this is from the speaker's point of view. Anna pointed towards the window because I am seeing Anna point towards something. Towards. It is from the speaker's point of view. I am sure this was like, Are ha, that moment. And when I say into, it is like, you know, we got into, it. that means you got in also, and then you moved towards that direction to get into it. He looked straight into my eyes, okay? The caterpillar, also when we are talking about a transformation from something to something, we say into. So the caterpillar turned into butterfly. Not the caterpillar turned to butterfly, wrong. The caterpillar turned in butterfly, absolutely wrong, into butterfly. So in the direction and there was a body transformation from the inside. So we say the caterpillar turned into butterfly. And out of. Now that is another place where I see the confusion. Off and out of, from the surface of something. When you take something from the surface of, or something from down the surface. We say off something. For example, he took the hat off the table. Okay, so let's assume that, you know, this is a hat, which is a toaster. Actually. But let's say this is kept here. And he took the hat off the table. Off the table. The ball rolled off the table. So either it is going down or it is being taken away from the surface. Take this packet off. Off the shelf. That means you bring it down. So let's say this is the shelf and this is the person. The person will take it off the shelf. Did you understand? When I say out of, you'll understand it better comparison in comparison with off. So when you take something from the interior of something, you take it out of something. And when you take it from the surface, you take off. You must have heard it with regards to the flights. The plane took off. Because the plane is flying from the surface of something. He went out of the room. So he was in the room. From the interiors of the room, he went out. So I'll not say he went off the room. He went out of the room. The bird flew out of the cage. She jumped out of the shelf. Not off. When I when I tell you she jumped off the shelf, which means she was standing here and she jumped off the shelf, which means on the surface of the shelf. But when I tell you she jumped out of, let's say the cat was hidden in the shelf. She jumped out. She's jumping from the interior of something. I saw him coming out of the library. So I saw him coming out. Okay. From the interiors of the library. For and against. This is not for something, vote for something and go against something. Uh, let us understand with, with the direction in the mind. It is used to show the direction only when the verb indicates the beginning. Verb, 
verb indicates okay now for is also used as a conjunction but darling please remember whenever we say for as a conjunction it is joining two sentences and whenever i say for as a preposition it is indicating some relationship or a movement that the verb is trying to show for example she left for japan so in the direction of japan she did the action of leaving so she left for japan early in the morning we set off for new delhi and they left for home late at night so you understand they left into the direction of something and you have a verb that is showing that movement so you use for and whenever i say against i'm showing to have contact or pressure the crowd pressed against the doors so there is the pressure okay so this is the door and this is the crowd they are pressing against okay there is a pressure here on the door so against because when they put that pressure they are you know stopped by this door he put a ladder let's say this is the wall and here he puts the ladder against the wall so it is the ladder is coming in a contact with the wall or the ladder the weight of the ladder is placed against the wall if you place it like this no the ladder will fall on your head dear so you'll always place it in a slant way because you're placing it against the pressure of that ladder the weight of that ladder is being balanced because it is being put on the wall also or better way the wall is also sharing the weight of the ladder he, she stood with her back against the wall so it is against the surface she's standing here and she's against that means she's leaning on the wall he hit his head against the branch so there was a branch you came in contact and you went back okay so there was a pressure you created on the branch also when you hit against so a contact or a pressure we will use against another place and another important announcement guys if you really really enjoyed this session and if you feel that you know you have learned something really good out of this session a very informative session yes some doubts were really solved oh we never knew how to use this if at all even one out of this expression has come into your mind or on your face or from your mouth remember i have a special class now when i highlight that special class it is for free and it is today that is 20th of may time 1 pm how to score full in letter writing very important topic for all the sections so we are going to discuss the hacks we are going to discuss round about 15 to 20 letters in our today's session the points the variety that we can cover under different kinds of heading so please attend the part 1 of how to score full in letter writing today how do enroll for this it is for free some small steps to be taken step number 1 you download the unacademy learning app this app will not take a lot of space in your phone uh, so i'm sure you can do that you download it from the play store step number 2 is you select the goal like if you want to sit for today's class which i'm sure you will you select the goal that is your class as cbsc class 9 now others who are watching who don't come from this board i'm sure you write letters so do attend this session the session is for everybody not just for school students but for everybody even if you don't have letters for your syllabus it is still important for you because we are discussing topics here you can always use this idea into something else another step after this that you're supposed to do is select english as your language preference please don't go for hindi you will not be able to access my video i teach in english subject english so please select english as your language preference after that you can search in the edu okay you will see a search bar where i have circled it please type vandana bajaj you can see my photo there sometimes you get a direct access sometimes you'll have to search for me so do that there you will see a session that is scheduled for may 21 pm how to score full in letter writing that is today by vandana bajaj enroll for free we are also going to have some live polls in the class we are also going to discuss a lot of things now on that platform you can even chat with me simultaneously as the lecture is going on you can ask your doubts so please attend that session also don't forget we have a live quiz on youtube so everybody sitting in different parts of the world can actually see how you perform in the quiz that's a good opportunity so please do watch this video again whenever you get time because revision is important polishing of the shoe is important so that it stays long and it shines bright okay so do watch this video again 
first of all do sit for the next session that i have which is absolutely free another thing i want you to do is attend for tomorrow's live quiz do sit for it it's going to be fun thank you so much after all these sessions after today's session if you feel that you're really getting to learn something and you're enjoying learning at the comfort of your home with that maggi bowl or a glass of milk in your hand use my referral code vv20 to subscribe and let's crack it thank you so much i had a great time with you